Welcome. So today I finally got the Z Fold 2, as you can see in front of me. And uh, at least this time around, I got it in relatively quick speed, unlike the previous version of it, which was not too long ago, honestly, that I had it here. So, uh, probably you know the deal, unboxing along with the overview, um, popping it open, uh, it's a well, premium packaging, obviously, uh, for one of the most expensive devices at the moment. So, let's pop it open. Um, we got this here and uh, now unfortunately this is in two languages uh, that one I don't understand and the other one uh, majority of people watching won't understand so I won't really bother reading what's here uh, just drop that to the side then in here we got paperwork let's pop it open so obviously paperwork uh, again it's uh, in my language right here Actually, no, this isn't. The warranty card is actually in English. Uh, but yeah, that's about all you get right here. So again, let's drop that to the side. And then we got the fold itself. Now I'm going to take it out and put it to the side for now. Uh, and we got whatever this is. Hmm. Services, whatever. Uh, charger, obviously. Um, charging cable. And the typical AKG headphones that are wired. Uh, it's really a shame that we get wired headphones with a device that comes around $2,000. Um, something like, what was it, a Note, a Note 10 or one of the Notes, I believe, was coming out with the wireless buds. Uh, for some reason, that device that's supposed to be more premium, at least I assume by a price tag, it feels like it, if there was a premium shelf, uh, this device is like, well, above that premium shelf um, even the packaging kind of feels like it's above premium as you can see it is well something that i haven't seen before the way it opens um, now, as you can see there is not much more in here uh, comparing it to the typical samsung devices so that's all you get so yeah just drop that to the side somewhere and get the phone in front so there we go so i already did set up the device so we don't have to do that anymore at least um let me quickly open it up there we go so that's off and i already managed to put some fingerprints on it in this case uh, but this is the device uh, at least opened up uh, and as you can see, it looks way better than the previous gen of this device. So uh, if you're wondering in terms of like, what were the changes uh, comparing it to the old old one? Uh, let's just start off with the front, which is probably one of the biggest changes I can say. There we go. Now it doesn't really fit on this tray right here. Uh, but I don't know if you remember, uh, the Fold one had this puny ass, puny display that was kind of like well, about this size and all the rest was just bezels um, they did change that up now so you have this super thin display as you can see let's just bring up a normal device here uh, something that has a little bit more uh, traditional shape so this is the mate uh, 20 pro and you can see that comparing it to this one the width of the display or device is about the same as this but uh, the screen itself is way uh, longer rather than wide so you can clearly see that if I if I la light it up you can see the difference right here let me also max out the brightness which it looks like it already is so let's open up something that is white there we go so you can now clearly see the display this is the entire at least front display now it is still ages better than what we had before um, in terms of like the size and usability of it personally honestly i didn't really mind the small one uh, it was supposed to be a kind of like a secondary display used only in like well just not really intensive tasks so i don't know you want to call someone you use the front display um so i didn't really mind it that much uh, i did understand the grip with it that people had i mean you pay two thousand for a device you <laughs> It kind of looks in the on the front like it's a device from 2010, so it it, it felt 
uh, it feels outdated at least the the front of the device if you're looking at it strictly that it's just a front display so at least this one joins the uh, the 2020 party and actually looks uh, modern with the bezels being fairly minimal and the display taking majority of the front so it is a nice change honestly uh, even though i didn't mind the previous one and obviously you have the typical uh, samsung uh, samsung system right here um, which is the difference of it being on a bigger display right now comparing it to the first fold so when we go into the specifics of this and this will be a 6.2 inch display so it is not small by any means um, with a resolution of 18 or 816 by 2260 so all well, the 816 seems a little bit small but like i said this device is super tall and not very wide so that's why it kind of sounds unimpressive but in all circumstances this is basically a 1080p display um so apart from that let's pop it open because that's where majority of the the glory is so when you open it up you can clearly see the gigantic display uh, this is well basically a note i mean not note but a tablet size and this is a 7.6 inch display um, it's just a typical super amoled display obviously it's samsung so nothing really uh, i wasn't expecting anything else here so is the front by the way and the resolution of this is 7 uh, 1768 by 2208 pixels so again just a 1080p display with a uh, random uh, aspect ratio not really maybe not really a 1080p not really sure how to classify this because it's closer to a square uh, rather than what we were used to with like the 16 by 9 or 21 by 9 displays or anything between that uh, but even though the resolution isn't necessarily anything mind-blowing here uh, the display is super sharp uh, you most likely won't be seeing any pixels right here uh, it is super vibrant and anything or anything or everything that you'd expect from a super AMOLED display so um, don't feel like this is something you know the display is kind of mediocre or anything it looks amazing and also the fact that it well, folds um, is nice too now i'm not sure if you ever used a foldable device um something that i was really upset about or well obsessed was the crease right here uh, as you see under the light it is visible uh, now this is something that once you get the phone and you kind of start using it in this form factor you start you st or start to or stop to pay attention about this it, it just kind of fades away and you're more uh, more focused on the on the device itself how nice it is and how it feels in hand and how it runs also the uh, the sheer size of the display and majority of the basically everything that is positive about it so the crease is just there but personally I kind of forget about it even though I thought that it will be annoying me uh, because it is here I clearly can see it um, so maybe in like lighting conditions that would reflect it weirdly kind of like you see right now with the sun it might be a little bit annoying uh, but honestly it's not as prevalent as it is on the recording i would say so you might not be as well as annoyed by this as you might think at least that's how i feel about it so in display and uh, let's finish up the actual display specifications here so it is a 373 pixels per inch uh, so fairly decent one basically what we expect from majority of the flagship devices uh, approaching somewhere like the 400 pixels per inch uh, this is kind of like the standard right now um, and it has an 88.6 percent screen to body ratio uh, now it does on the paper it seems a little bit small honestly there are devices that approach like 90 something uh, but because of the, of the size you don't really get to see that uh, the bezels are here obviously uh, we don't have bezel less phones yet uh, but they're really minimal and uh, i think the percentage just uh, makes it look unimpressive because of the entire device size 
but when you're holding it in hand those bezels are barely noticeable especially when you're using a dark background right here um, they're almost invisible but when you open it up you can kind of see it so uh, moving on the display is an HDR 10 plus certified obviously I mean it's an AMOLED display and something that was surprising to me it comes with a 120 hertz refresh rate uh, now I did have a real problem with the uh, Note 20s the specifically anything below Ultra not having a higher refresh rate so I'm really happy to see this being done here now I'm not exactly sure if this this is only the the inside screen being 120 let's quickly check um, if both of them are but something tells me it's just gonna be the single uh, single display in the inside and yep this is a 60 Hertz so at the front you just have a typical 60 but at least inside it is 120 and this does add a lot into the experience of the device how smooth it runs and how it feels uh, it does add that super premium feel to it in my opinion now if you never use a 120 Hertz display you most certainly will not be able to see it on the recording right here uh, this is something that you have to check out yourself on your device or any kind of device for instance in the store make sure that it's enabled and just start scrolling through things you'll see how smooth buttery smooth it glides through everything just a different experience comparing it to the 60. so moving on to the camera department now at the front we have a single uh, camera as you can see uh, with a, a little bit more modern approach uh, as you probably remember the foldable the first one I had this like weird notch uh, basically where it cuts out part of the display almost uh, and also basically protrudes uh, the same way the bezel does so that was really weird um, happily it's not here anymore so we now have a single 10 megapixel camera it shoots at 4k uh, not 4k 60 4k 30 or 1080p 30 now there is no uh, no for instance 1080p 60 for some reason but honestly uh, the fact that you can probably use uh, use the camera on the front I assume um, I guess we're gonna test it out uh, how that looks like if it's possible uh, but by all means I, I think this would probably be a smart decision from them to make uh, assuming it's not already so just a 10 megapixel here and if we close the device at the back we have something similar to the note series uh, with the triple setup of all 12 megapixel sensors so we have 12 megapixel wide telephoto and ultra wide and all those can shoot at 4k 60 1080p 60 and 240 and uh, 720p at 960. now the 1080p and 720 with the 240 frames and 960 those are slow motions just so you don't confuse them uh, but 1080p for and uh, and 4k are just a normal 60 frames recording now I am kind of sad that we, we don't get the uh, 120 Hertz uh, re, uh, not Hertz but 120 frames recording kind of like the note 20 ultra has considering this inside is a 120 Hertz display so this would really go well together um, but Let's actually open up the camera and see how it runs, assuming I can quickly find it. Now it looks like it's preloaded with a bunch of game. Oh, not preloaded. Uh, someone from the office already installed it here. Um, now, am I blind? There we go, camera. So, uh, this is the camera right here. Now, let's see if I flip it over. So unfortunately, it does not look like allow me, me to do this. Ah, uh -huh, there we go. So there is a button for it. As you can see right now, you could basically use the um, well, front right here uh, to see yourself while recording. So I guess that makes sense why the uh, why the inside camera is kind of garbage, I would say, because you can basically use the front of it. Um, and get the best resolution out of, of the front or the main sensors 
So this is really nice. Now it looks like it is hidden by the behind this button, so you do have to tap on it. And once you, well, right now it's on, as you can see. If I tap on it again, there we go. Now it's off, and the display is off here. So it is a nice touch. Now I would uh, try to make a photo right here. So I can find anything to capture. Um, guess we're gonna see. I just get this little tray with a bunch of SIM cards in there. It's, at least it's Samsung, so it's a positive. So let's capture a couple of photos right here. So now, as you probably see, there is no macro lens, but we do have a two times zoom, which I think it makes up for it in my opinion. This is fairly detailed and if I for instance bring my own phone in here um, which has basically a dedicated super macro lens for it I have a feeling that it will be uh, might be even a little bit behind. So let's just get a comparison right here. So, as you can see, uh, I would say they're fairly close. Uh, probably if I would capture this one a little bit better, it would basically blow my phone out of the water here. So, yeah, now, as you've seen, no macro lens, but seems to be no problem. I really don't see, um, for instance, why the manufacturers do try to jam those two megapixel macro lenses in there. They are basically utter garbage and they contribute nothing to the device. So uh, the fact that Samsung didn't want to add or didn't want to or didn't try to jam useless sensors in here is a nice touch at least. Um, it doesn't make you feel like you're buying a, a device that tries to really tries to basically add features to, to it. So it seems like it has more of it. So it looks like they're focused on on the sensors that they have and that actually are good and didn't try to add useless uh, sensors in there. And then moving lastly to well the specifications of the device itself. Um, as you probably expect it comes with almost just top specs all around. So it has a Snapdragon 865 Plus, the best one at the moment. Uh, there is nothing really better than that. Uh, it has a 12 gig uh, RAM, that's the only version and also probably the highest on the market it might be a little bit more in some devices but that is just like a super rare thing we even have 12. Uh, in terms of storage it has two variants 256 gigs and 512 both having uh, the UFS 3.1 which is basically um, allowing you to transfer data from for instance in the phone uh, or different parts of the phone with and on SSD like speed so this is super fast storage and let me quickly see if we have expendable storage right here now I I do feel like there won't be and yep it looks like there isn't so you looks like you only get a single sim card slot so that's about it and this is a little bit underwhelming so if you're buying this device and you really need space I would suggest that you go for 512 uh, because anything past that uh, you won't be able to expand it anywhere anywhere any different way so either 256 or 512 that's all you get and then we start going down to the kind of, of a downside of this of this device so it has a 4500 milliamp hour battery which in my opinion seems a little bit small for the fact that you have the uh, two different displays and the front one being or the main one being just this huge tablet size display basically uh, and apart from that we move to another problem which is the 25 watt puny charger so not, not, not sure why I, it's 2020 I would really like if Samsung started including 30 or above chargers. I feel like I'm using a, a Samsung Galaxy like S, what is it, 9? I think they're basically the same chargers. Uh, the only thing that they changed in there 
uh, is the fact that the charger itself has a type c port in it so you have a cable that has just both ends type c instead of the typical type a to type c uh, but mm, different specs the, the charger is just underwhelming in my opinion especially for a device that comes at two thousand dollars basically uh, now it does have a little bit of a more redeeming qualities like 11 watt wireless charging uh, personally i the idea of wireless charging is cool and all uh, but the 11 watt charging of of just wireless is just underwhelming and i prefer to just plug it in rather than just put it on a pad uh, try to fiddle around to get it charging and then have a mediocre charging speed uh, now this is nothing really to do with the uh, phone at least uh, this phone um, I just more the wireless technology um, isn't necessarily picking up as probably some people would hope to um, so the 11 watt charging is kind of like the standard for majority of the phones that do have wireless charging uh, there is only I believe one other phone that does it at ridiculous speeds of like I think 40 watts uh, but this isn't the phone unfortunately and also it has a reverse wireless charging at four and a half watts so this is just something that you use to charge your headphones earbuds something like that um, i wouldn't recommend to use this to charge other devices uh, your battery on this one isn't big enough that's number one and number two the charging speeds of this are just laughable uh, at best i i don't think you can get a uh, five percent in a respectable time unless you're planning to go to sleep and then uh, something that i another part of this is the fingerprint sensor which is located on the side on the power key uh, now i kind of don't mind it but i kind of do uh, it's a i would say a double-edged edged sword i really like the fact that and uh, at least i got used to it the under display fingerprint I'm not sure if this is possible on a flexible display probably would be nice to see if it is um, or for instance have it on the front at least um, because on the side it just kind of feels outdated to me and if I'm paying basically the most premium price for a device uh, I don't want to feel like I'm spending money on something that uses kind of like easy something to just is easy like the fingerprint sensor on the side that feels like i just let's just put put it in here just so there is a fingerprint sensor but let's not put much effort into it and honestly this, this kind of idea uh, extends to most of the device even though i like it i feel like there hasn't been done much uh between the two uh two iterations of it so the first one uh, as you've probably seen before had the problem of uh, of people peeling off the cover now in this one they i believe they include a protective cover on here as you can see there is a tiny little like lighting that you can maybe see let me lock it and try to so you can see that there is some kind of protective film on here and you can see this kind of like u cut out uh, for the camera so uh, i i'm not exactly sure but it might be removable it does say something about on about it on here so we have um, it is recommended that you do not remove the screen protection film and do not install other film other uh, other stickers as doing so may cause uh, product damage so the way they kind of word it it seems like it is possible to take it off if it's damaged or something like that but they really discourage you from doing so and also really discourage you from putting any kind of other protection now this is a step up anyway from the previous one which uh, had this film that people peeled off and either damaged the device at least at the first launch of it uh, or also there basically being no protective film at all apart from the kind of like the thing that they installed and tried to hide under the bezels um, so yeah uh, but apart from that you have this entire list of things that uh, you just basically cannot do uh, so don't press the screen or the front camera uh, lens with a hard or sharp object uh, such uh, such as a pen or a fingernail um, i wouldn't consider a fingernail to be hard or sharp really 
but this device is basically plastic uh, or they su it's supposed to be some kind of glass but let's be honest uh, the glass that we're used to isn't bending from fingernails um, uh, doing so could result in product damage um, such as, as cr scratches or dents so uh, fl flimsy little display I can get damaged by anything that you put in between it basically and if you get angry at your phone and you drive a fingernail to it you will basically later on remember about that fingernail whenever, whenever you look at the display then we have another one uh, when folding the device make sure there uh, there are no objects such as cards coins or keys placed in between the screen as doing so may cause damage there is a lot of causes of damage here so obviously don't place anything in between uh, the device is kind of designed that way so uh, it folds and has just the right amount of space so yeah obviously putting something in there might just literally break the screen itself especially if you kind of like slap it closed and then even put it in your pocket it might be even worse so yeah uh, now the thing that i do kind of feel sad about is the next one right over here uh, this device is not dust or waterproof uh, waterproof so exposure to liquid or small particles such as water coffee or sand um, really the sand is probably the worst one uh, may cause product damage uh, such as uh, scratches and dents on again dents on the screen not really sure how sand could cause this uh, i think probably if you look at uh, the note not notes but the fold uh, one uh jerry rick everything did this amazing video where he just kind of slapped some dirt on it and closed it and uh, to me this device would <laughs> become basically unbury unbearable to use the descent particles and the hinges make this most obnoxious scratching noise that just is unusable at that point so if you're planning to go to the beach i would strongly advise you against taking this phone with you and then the last one um is the uh, magnet so the device has magnets built into it so when you close it it just holds closed your device contains magnets uh, keep a safe distance between your device and objects uh, that may be affected by magnets such as credit cards and uh, what In whatever medical devices um, if you have an implantable medical device uh, consult your phys physician uh, before use now there is one more thing that i would add to here probably that is catering to most of us at this time uh, which is hard drives uh, magnets and hard drives from a computer for instance don't go really well together um, to the point that your hard drive go bye-bye so that's probably something that they should add here instead of uh, pacemakers or whatever um, not every one of us has a or majority of us i don't believe have a implant there there's most certainly people that do so that might be really bad for them but uh majority of us would probably be more bummed out if we erase our hard drive uh, with our phone by just placing it a little bit too close so that's all we get on the uh, care instruction uh, that is basically slapped on the front of the display whenever you open it up for the first time and then finishing up um i'll mention this device comes in two different colors or more depending how you look at it uh, probably the best way to look at it is uh, on the on the samsung website uh, because by default we have two different colors so we have a mystic black and mystic brown but they do have a ability to, or you have the ability to customize the hinge color so Right now it's not really visible but if we close it right now you can see that's the hinge it's just this metal piece right here and you can customize the color of it now i'm gonna switch on the screen to galaxy website or samsung and you can clearly see it right over here so we have uh, the mystic black color right here and you can see it right over here uh, the hinge options so we can change it to black silver gold red or blue and same options are when you're using the mystic brown uh, now apart from uh, those colors uh, you also have this um, super 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 premium version of this device 
uh, because paying two thousand dollars isn't enough uh, so we have the uh, thumb brown um, edition which uh, i don't really know how to show you because uh, number one there is only like a thousand of them and number two uh, they will cost a, a bit more than this one i believe the the price will be approaching something like three thousand uh, dollars but just to put that in perspective the device is basically uh, completely customized uh, so if we look at the well, the back of it for instance um, with the other edition you will have just I believe it's kind of like a grayish color with these uh, red and uh, under color stripes just to signify I be believe the color scheme of the company so you have basically like the stripes across uh, you do have something that well this device is missing which is a, a protection for it now I don't know if you remember but the uh, fold one did come with a bumper and it was a really nice bumper it was carbon fiber it felt really premium this phone doesn't come with anything like that so if you want a nice bumper that fits this device at the moment uh, uh, that comes with it you will have to fork out for the, the premium edition of this device I, I, I guess um, not sure if it's worth it really and now the casing of it is kind of weird I would say and basically clips to half of it I think from what I've seen so it clips on the back and has this kind of like flap that goes over the front um, and it's basically the same color scheme as the rest of the device and uh, apart from that you get the uh, beans as uh, earbuds uh, so not the, the normal Samsung buds and those are the newer ones that kind of look like beans and you also get a watch with it a smartwatch so you do get fairly decent bang for your back uh, just the problem is they didn't make I would believe uh, enough of those devices now they are super expensive but then you do feel like at least i would say in terms of how much you pay for it it feels like you're getting your money's worth for it and the pre the packaging for it is also really premium now let me quickly check if i can find it for instance to show you right here if i can actually find the browser so let's see there we go google chrome This is just more to show you. Now it is kind of weird to type on this keyboard. As you see, it's kind of divided in half and it does feel a little bit weird to me. Uh, and also i'll mention one more thing uh, the haptic feedback on this device isn't very uh very good it, it's still decent but i would have expected a little bit better haptic feedback from it honestly but you can see this is basically how it looks like the packaging you get the phone uh the watch but this is the uh, z fold and they had the same thing uh, let's see if this is the note this look, might look like an yep that's the not note but the fold so you can see the packaging is basically premium uh, you get different uh, straps for your watch you get this casing um, the beans buds and uh, the phone itself so you do get a fairly decent amount for your money and it does really look premium but like I said there isn't very many of those that will be produced so um, I guess this would kind of finish up the overview of this device now it has been a really long one and uh, maybe a little bit biased along with uh, with me kind of having a problem with it even though I really like this device um, at the end of the day um, I'm pretty sure this device doesn't cater to a lot of people uh, I am the one person that I know that caters to I'm really excited for devices like this. It just kind of changes up the market from these typical slabs of glass. And it is nice to see some companies trying to do something else. Um, the price tag of it is a little bit too high in my opinion. I would really like to see it a little bit lower. I would even not mind sacrificing some parts of it to have it lower. 
uh, because in my opinion two thousand dollars is a little bit excessive price uh, for a device and for majority of the people making this kind of phone um, hard for majority of us to pick just because it's just expensive and especially in different countries for instance where i'm from uh two thousand for a dollar uh, for a phone is uh well basically like more than a month of work for some people here so imagine spending your entire for instance two month paycheck on a phone uh, it just seems ludicrous and that's why i would really like to see a lower price tag but then i just kind of fault of my country here uh, and i will also mention that Samsung does have a nice feature where they allow you to trade in your phone. And I'll kind of show you that quickly here. So, uh, as you can see, if you pick it up from Unlocked, and basically all of them, Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, and Unlocked version of it come at the same price, but you have this option of trading it in. So, um, normally it will cost roughly around $2,000, um, but any kind of, uh, you can trade in almost majority of the samsung devices a uh, couple apple and a couple google now if you choose for instance samsung you can see the prices that you will get for them for a trade-in so uh, the galaxy z flips uh, and uh, even the premium version of the flip right here you get all 800 along with the, the s20 ultras and uh, actually no s20 ultra is already 650 so uh, yeah anything lower just keeps on going down in price then we have things like Google. Uh, those prices are just, I would say, almost not worth even trading in. Um, and then Apple, uh, again, 500 for an iPhone 11 Pro Max seems a little bit mm, like you're losing your money here. So, yeah, but as you can see, if you trade it in, uh, you have at max $800 that you will get back. And this is only from the Samsung uh, Z Flips devices, it looks like. Um, and it looks like also the Fold. Yeah, so if you trade a previous fold, it looks like you also get 800. Um, so that's basically the price tag if you trade it for 800. So a Samsung device back to them. Um, you can do it also with a cracked screen apparently, uh, but it will be even less. And uh, yeah, the the price normally without anything is about two thousand dollars. So yeah, and finishing this up. Uh, I would really like to recommend this device. Um, I really like it, but at the price tag, if it's basically as rough for you as it is for me, uh, I would say it's almost not worth it. Uh, so this device would more be catering to those people that just have um, too much money, uh, which isn't really me. And even though I would really like to have a device like that, uh, well, let's be honest, I can't afford it here. <laughs> so I really like it, but at a lower price tag. And the device itself works as you expect as a flagship um, the packaging and everything about it is almost premium i would really like to see uh, wireless uh, earbuds in there uh, like samsung used to do with some premium devices uh, which for some reason they dropped here and i would also like to see a casing for this device uh, after spending two thousand dollars every chinese manufacturer can make it with a casing um, even the samsung previous fold could do it so i don't see a difference why this one couldn't it's the same price same upgraded device to a newer standard, where's the case? And uh, also a SD card slot, that's, that's something that I would really like to see um, because maybe I don't wanna fork out more money for a uh, 512 gigabyte version of this device and I just maybe want to slap an SD card. So that would be also a really nice touch here. But apart from the, the problems of the design of this device in terms of what they included in it, the device itself runs just flawlessly as you would expect from a device for that price range. Um, probably not much better devices are out there. Um, and other than that, it does really feel nice to use the uh, big display right here. It does have this wow effect and the phone itself will probably turn some heads if you're using it normally on day-to-day -day use. Um, and yeah, I really like this device. So if you if you really want it and you can afford it, I would recommend it, honestly. So yeah. And if you found this video, extremely long video, helpful, uh, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.